Thanks for thanks for being here. Got like 16 minutes. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah. So we're waiting just a few minutes until a few more people show up. If 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 that happens or not, we'll see, and um, we'll get going. But I hope everybody's doing well in these uh, Corona times and these election times. I hope everyone has voted already so they don't have to stand on a huge long line on Tuesday because I will be on a huge long line on Tuesday, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, hello, Molly, how's it going? Um, say what? Thanks for being here. Of course, yeah, this is the beginning of a bunch of these, so yeah, it'll be great to have these, especially on the record later. So it is being recorded, Nat. And yeah, we'll just get started in about two minutes. What time is it? Yeah, two minutes. Hello, Julian Sigrid. Sigrid? Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah. Yu Yang, hello. Susan, Robert. Thanks for hello, being here. Chris. Everyone else that's currently not on video, hello. Thanks for being here. If you guys have questions as we go along, um, just enter them in the chat and we'll get to them as we go. Uh, I'll start answering questions. Uh, well, I'll start asking Nat questions. If you have questions for me, that's fine too. Um, this is part of a series for Blue Sky Gallery where we're going to talk to artists, mainly the first artists we're talking to, like all of them are people that I've worked with personally. Uh, and, and yeah, so we're, we all have like, you know, we, I made a lot of books this year and Nat Ward is one of those artists that we've uh, collaborated with on a book named Big Throat this year, uh, which I actually, you know, rather uh, have Nat speak about and not me because he will be better at it. But um, Nat comes to us from Queens, New York, where he lives with his fans. I'm also in Queens, so we're like very close to each other. Uh, and he, we've, I think we've known each other for, since we, since, since I got out of school. I don't know when you got out of, where did you go to school, Matt? Uh, I went to NYU for undergrad. Huh? Um, and so I think we probably would have met right around 2007, maybe 2008, something like yeah. that. Yeah, connecting through, I think the Humble Arts Foundation uh, guys, John Feinstein and Amani Olu, they started that. I think I met them in 2007 and then they started that and met all of their people over the course of the years after that. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to have Amanda minus out the faces until we get to a question and answer section. And then we're going to go back to having all of you guys involved. Um, cause we, we really want to hear from you. I think this is about like talking to some artists and trying to figure out what, what's life about in, in 2020 for art makers. I mean, it, it's been a crazy ass year and I don't think there's any, um, standards are gone. There's no like standards. So, so what do we do next is the real, real question. But first, Nat, you're in Queens. Uh, and so what do you do for, what do you do for a living? Like what, what do you do with your, with your days? So, uh, first off, I want to uh, thank you, Chris, and also Blue Sky for putting this on. Um, really happy to be here. Um, I also want to thank a couple of my students who showed up because that's what I do. Um, I teach in a couple of colleges uh, here in New York City, both at LaGuardia Community College, FIT, and uh, occasionally teach a large format class over at Cooper Union. Um, although, as you can imagine, that is one of the things that has changed uh, during the pandemic is I'm not exactly shoulder to shoulder with students in the darkroom right now. Um, but yeah, that's how, that's how I, that's how I get by. Uh-huh. And okay. So how many classes are you teaching this semester? A lot or is it? Oh goodness. Four. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's, it, it is a lot. It is definitely a lot. Okay. Um, and so this thing started during the middle of last semester. What did you have to do to kind of get ready for like, how did you respond to that? I mean, it seems like you were like mid-semester. So, so we were like, let's see, uh, LaGuardia starts a little later um, because they have an intercession. And so we had gotten right to the point of the students being able to develop their film on their own in the class that I was in. 
And then, and then, you know, the city shut down and the school is like, we're not going to have classes for two weeks so that you can figure out how the hell you're going to make this work. Um, and in that two week period, um, you know, I think as for many educators, it was a bit of a, it's a bit of a free for all, like just, just do what you think is best in order to salvage the class as best you can. Um, and I, it's been more structured this semester and certainly more structured over the summer um, in terms of the way I'm able to work with my students. But in the spring, um, in particular, the, the production class. I also teach a, a kind of business of photography class for photo majors. Okay. Um, and that one, that one just flowed. It was still, you know, do the readings, um, don't hate accounting too much, maybe, maybe think about how to build a website, right? But these are all things that like, I can give you a test on Blackboard because I was already giving you a test on Blackboard anyway. Um, but <laughs> the production class, um, I, I kind of, I kind of, um, both got, got lax with my students and I was like, well, you guys weren't planning to use digital cameras. So, uh, I understand if you, if you have to use a cell phone, uh, to make this work. Um, but most of the students did have digital cameras. We just kind of, we just kind of swapped over. There gotcha. was also this thing where, um, where Ilford kind of shut down production as well. So it was also kind of like... I can't get the supplies that I need. My oh. students can't get the supplies they need. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we turned it into a online directed projects critique class. It, it, it worked out great. I, like to, to uh, you know, to the quality of student, uh, it really speaks because they, they um, everybody was, in a heightened uh, kind of traumatic state. And I had some students who either got sick themselves or had partners who got very sick over the oh. course of the semester. Um, but man, their dedication and, and willingness to um, really be, be vulnerable in a completely alienating moment um, was super impressive. That's, I mean, I was, I was really happy with the way it turned out given oh, everything that's really that happened. Great. Really great. And I think right at the beginning, we spoke about our, the book we made together, which is named Big Throat uh, early. I think it was late last year we had the conversations about making this project. Yeah. And it was, it, and, and yeah, we, we made it during this pandemic pretty much. And what I'm gonna do now is just show the book as a whole um, in slides. And then we can just go through like, if you would explain the book to us, then we can kind of go through it. So is this on screen? Are people seeing this? Is it like big enough? We're good? Yeah, looks good. Okay. So yeah, Nat, I'm going to let you just speak about your project and sure. what you, because I didn't do anything. All I did was like produce it or kind of, but um, you were responsible for the text, the photographs, the, the pretty much all the design work. Um, so yeah, please explain to us like your book, Big Throat, and I'll go through the slides slowly. Absolutely. I think Maybe the best thing is to is to start with the connection between the place and the title. Um, I was going uh, on my honeymoon in 2016, and before we left, we had we had dinner with some friends of ours, um, and one of them said, "Oh, you're going out there. There's there's like two things you got to check out." You got to check out the Beastie Badlands, and you got to check out this bridge that crosses the Rio Grande. He's like, it was the one in in um, oh, what is that? What is that movie? Uh, mm. Natural Born Killers, right? And I was like, okay, ah. all right, I'll go, I'll go check out the bridge. Sure, whatever. Um, and uh, my my wife ha happened to be pregnant um, with our first child, um, and we were out there. Uh, during the 2016 election, just for a, a little bit of kind of like general context. Mm -hmm. um, but the the bridge uh, crosses the Rio Grande, um, and it's and it's the the Grand Gorge Bridge, right? Which a horrible uh, anglicization of that um, linguistically would be Big Throat. Um, but that made me think about this uh, Robert Frost 
quote, it's from a, a poem of his, that a poem begins as a lump in the throat, a sense of wrong, a homesickness, a lovesickness. Um, and I thought a lot about that. Um, and I thought a lot about uh, feeling kind of um, a longing for a, a kind of America that might feel like home um, or a kind of life that might feel like home. And all of those things in that moment were really uh, not happening. It was a moment of tremendous disorientation for me. I, I did not uh, expect to be as, as unready for um, the prospect of having a child, you know, kind of mentally as, as I was in that moment. So I went to the bridge um, and I photographed uh, from sunup to sundown, walking across the bridge and hanging myself over the side of the bridge. Um, <laughs> I've been on this bridge and it is not a bridge you wanna be hanging yourself outside, like <laughs> from the rafters of, I mean, it no. is very high above the ground. It, it's high, it shakes a lot, right? <laughs> like a lot. Oh, no, um, thank you. And, and, and it moves in, in many directions and it's loud. Um, but so, so the, other, the other side of this is that, um, you know, I, I, I only realized this upon, upon reflection after the fact, um, but I've had a number of experiences in my life where, um, Either, either ending up uh, in close proximity uh, to my own mortality or in, in close proximity to the recognition of my own mortality led to a kind of clarifying effect. Like, you know, I almost, I almost died in a plane crash once um, and, and had, a, had a real um, epiphanic moment uh, that, that clarified a lot of priorities for me. So, so I didn't realize that's what I was doing, but when I, when I came back and I looked at the pictures that I had made, um, I kept coming back to these pictures of the bridge shadows. Um, mm -hmm. And in particular, the disorienting perspective, um, the horizonless perspective, the, the kind of uh, visual destabilization, um, and I had to kind of think about a character, you know, I'm looking at the pictures, I'm like, who is this person who mm -hmm. keeps looking over the edge of the bridge over and over again? They keep going back to look over the edge of the bridge over and over again. Um, and, and, you know, I think it's not uncommon for people to, um, to visit places of extreme disorientation or even to, to ponder or consider their own death. Um, you know, whether it's by driving your car too fast or drinking too much or whatever, um, there, there, there can be uh, a certain clarity that, that you can find in moments of extreme disorientation. Yeah. Um, True. And so, and so I, you know, I had photographed a ton of contacts. I had photographed, you know, I photographed really promiscuously. Um, but when I got back, I just, I'm in the dark room and I was obsessing over these shadows. Um, and, and so I kind of listened to that and said, okay, that's, that's what this project needs to, needs to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. And then I found wonderful material metaphors and the graphic abstractions of the shadows as well. Um, in particular, in that first image, which is actually the big print behind me as well. Um, uh -huh. You know, there's such print? a like, well, let's show show me that print. Okay, well, hold on. It seems enormous. It's too big. It's too yeah, big. Um, <laughs> way, 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 way too big. Um, the the Whitney Hubs is a better size over there. Um, but but um, you know, there's such a there's such a tangle. Um, and I and I thought a lot about kind of um the tangle of of brain fog. Um. You know that 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 one might go through when they're confronting a prospect like this, mm -hmm. um, and then on the, on you know to step away a little bit here, um, you know, I had been integrating writing into installations that I've been doing uh, for a number of years before 
doing this book, either through wall etchings uh, or vinyl text or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and many of those, uh, those pieces dealt with kind of the idea of failed utopias, um, disappearance as a personal and political act, how you establish a kind of psychological self-sovereignty, et cetera. Um, but this one was really like, I could deal in kind of fictional characters with those. Um, but this one uh, certainly um, was something where I had to, I had to mine my own personal experience and, and reflect deeply on um, what I was going through. I mean, I got married and my wife got pregnant immediately. Um, I was in a job that I hated, um, you know, and, and I was watching my, my country tear itself apart and turn inward uh, with its yeah, violence. This, this happened right after the election when you made these photographs or right before? On the day of. These, so these are from the day of? The day of the 2016 election, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, so, oh, so as far as the book is concerned, the text always lays out in a way that is not normal text layout, right? Like as you see on the screen here, that's like yeah. we're breaking, like it's breaking down into the corner. What what made you like what made you work with text in this fashion? Um, so I wanted there to be a, a landscape created by the text, or at least uh -huh. an allusion to landscape in the typography, um, but also an allusion to kind of. Um, the craggy violence of that place, right? Mm -hmm. like it's it's a it's a landscape that will kill you if you let it very easily, very quickly. And so, um, you know, I, I I used a lot of kind of line breaks uh, within within the the poetic text um, to kind of make make for a a dissonance in the rhythm of the words. Mm -hmm. um, while also thinking about mimicking the graphic elements of the photographs. So kind of all of those things were running through my head as I put that together. Gotcha. And yeah, cool. And so you actually went on, like, can you, do you have a pick, do you have a, uh, the book it, with, like within reach? There it uh, is. So you can see like the, the images that we're showing are slightly brighter than they are in the book. We yeah. wanted that like really harsh, the, like kind of darkness of the contrast, but please show people the cover and how we, you figured sure. out. Sure. So this is this is um, this is like a this is a pre-production copy with the with the cover slightly slightly uh, like different, but you can see that um, the stamping the like foil yes, the, uh, the foil stamp. the clear foil stamp, mm -hmm. um, which creates a really nice kind of depth of tone under the letters for sure, and. Well, I, I want to like minus back. We're still showing some images of the book, but I wanted to ask sure. like, what was the first photograph you ever made and why did you want to continue? Uh, the first photograph I ever made, I was eight years old and my grandma gave me one of those, those little, what, what is that format called? It was like 160 or something. The, the very the skinny brownie. ones. No, not oh, brownies. Like the little skinny what? ones with the flashbulb. Yeah, 116 millimeter. I remember those. Yeah. I used so, to work so, photo photo and have to like process those strange little things. Yes, exactly, and the and the, the quality is horrendous, um, and and so I tried to take pictures of um, of a bird in the trees in my yard where I grew up, and and the funny thing is, like total like kind of photographer coincidence, of course you can't see the damn bird; it's too far away, right? I could see it through the viewfinder, but you can't see it in the pictures, but the pictures are really just. They look a lot like these because it's just a bunch of tree branches crossing each other. So it's like, like when I, because I found them, like they're in, they're in a little like um, 1980s box with a cartoon skateboard on it that I took out of my mom's storage and now sits in my, my basement bathroom. But so I actually have this pack of drugstore photos that were the first photos I ever made. That's great. So it's a kind of a reference to this many years later where you've made these photographs again of the distance? I just never changed. Never. <laughs> never. I think that that's, that's okay. Uh, my sister's on the call. She asks, I like the emotion in the text and the mood of the photos. Do you usually take photos of places 
do you also make portraits or do you prefer landscapes? I mean, that's a few different questions, but. Um, sure. Um, I spent a lot of time in a lot of dis different deserts, um, not on purpose. So there's a body of work, you know, uh, in the Judean desert. Um, there's a, a installation made from images I made in the Mojave Desert, and then it all culminated in in this kind of uh, desert book. Um, mm -hmm. Outside of that, I mean, I, I think of myself as a as a landscape photographer for sure, um, yeah. but I include within that the the social landscape. Um, so I'm photographing in, you know, I'm photographing gardens in Queens, which I've been doing for almost four years now, like uh, people's backyards and private front gardens and side cool. gardens. Yeah. Um, and inevitably, you know, a personal jump in and ruin my picture. Um, no, I mean, it's, it's kind of great. <laughs> um, and I'm also photographing people on the beach out on Long Island. Um, and, you know, I've, I photograph everything. Like I said, I, I photograph promiscuously. Um, it just so happens that that this is a really particularly landscape and like very narrow vision of a landscape kind of project. Yeah, I gotcha. And I mean, that's you know sometimes what a project is: narrowing down and figuring out what it needs to needs to go within this uh, this this tight. Um, tight surrounding. I mean, like just kind of figuring out what you need to do. Um, do you, like I just showed the book, do you have a favorite image from from the book that you want to show us like with your copy of it? We'd yeah, love sure. to like, know, like I mean, why? So, so I'll bring up that, I'll bring up that, um, not the frontest piece, but kind of that first image in the book. This was like the really re revelatory image for me in understanding what I was dealing with, with the work. Um, and then, um, of course, like I, I would, I would lie if I said that, like the final, the final image in the book, which is, in, let's see if I can get it without. Yeah, too much no, glare. we can see it. It looks that, yeah, that's how dark it's supposed to be. It's really great. Mm -hmm. um, where it's, where it's the fact that the the place is defined by its shadows, right? Um, and to have that be the kind of move at the end, where there's also the self realization that who isn't defined by their secrets. Um, <laughs> I just think it was a lovely, a lovely, I think it's a, a, it was a fun image to print. Yeah, I mean, it's a fun image to see, or both of them are actually. Um, we have a question, what was the impulse behind the sequence of images? How did you come up with that? Um, so, so I, at first, I was looking at, I was looking at a, a number of different really old books. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Walker Evans' message from the interior and um, the the Wright Morris, the inhabitants, um, and so I started out like just kind of mimicking like those two layouts and sequences and trying to trying to play with that just to get an idea, a location yeah. for myself. Um, and then I put those books down and um, I started to think more about my background in music um so i mean like a long long time ago i was a touring uh and recording musician um with a like a classically trained vocalist um and so i thought about all right what is it i want this thing to to feel like um and so i then started to structure it much more like a like a musical score, and I was thinking about the graphic quality of of notes on a page, um, and thinking about how the the shadow could could rise and fall and create kind of um, different different tones as you move throughout the book. Gotcha. And uh, I was going to ask what your well first before I ask that I see a question came in somebody asked where can we find more of your work and I think that of course you can find it on your website and of course the social medias but what are there some social media you have more than one social media account and what are you doing on social media and, and like why <laughs> <laughs> um so so here's the here's the I, I used to have many many social media accounts many um but I, I I deleted I deleted MySpace two weeks ago 
Two weeks ago, you no, MySpace was still kidding, around. <laughs> Friendster. MySpace. Uh, <laughs> My God, man. Um, no, but I, I did. I deleted. I deleted Facebook um, right around 2017 ish. I think I got off Twitter because it was making me psychotic, um, and 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 so I I I have. I have had an Instagram for a while and I've purposefully kept it very, very minimal. Um, but that said, and I don't think this really counts as social media, but I do help to run and I was co-creator of this website called A New Nothing, um, mm -hmm. which, is a, which is a group of photographic conversations. So you have two photographers who will have a conversation in photographs. Um, mm -hmm. And I started it with my friend, Ben Alper. And so aside from, aside from my website, and uh, documentation of past exhibitions that exist out there on the Google. Um, a New Nothing is actually probably where uh, the most casual version of my, my photographic effort exists, but also um, most of it, uh, at least in terms of actual pictures, uh, because I don't post a lot on Instagram, um, but I do, like, I do like talking to Ben in photos a lot. And so we've been doing it for Four years. That conversation between you and Ben Alper, who is also an excellent photographer, that conversation happens between you two on the site. I know yeah. that there's like hundreds of different people that are collaborating on this site, but you only stick with one person for the whole thing. Yeah, Ben and I are Ben, ben and I are married. He asked for a divorce, and I, I wouldn't let him get it without him paying the alimony. Oh, that's so sad. I mean, well, you know, sad, not sad. Who? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, okay. And I was gonna ask, like, do you? Do you have any shows coming up in person? How has that worked? Because I oh, know that God. you're an, exhibit, an exhibiting, exhibiting artist a lot of the time, but now that we're in this time period where you know, things have slowed down a bit, like, are you seeing opportunity in that way or is it on hold? Um, I, am, I think I'm less interested in those opportunities right now, um, thanks in large part uh, to the experience with, with the book. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, also I have, I have gone to only a few in-person events and that's my own Michigas, right? I understand different people well, are comfortable children. with different things. Yeah. Children and relatives who are high risk and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, uh, while it's lovely, um, and, and satisfying to go. Um, I can't lose myself in other people's work the same way. I find that I'm constantly having the background noise uh, of anxiety. And like I said, that's my problem, but it makes it also very difficult for me to imagine shaping a space for other people to move through. I mean, I really think when I do exhibitions, I think so much about, about the choreography that the photographs and text allow for, um, yeah. how they help people move through a space. I'm sure, listen, I'm sure I could do it, but I, I am, I'm actually more interested in, in um, people having a private experience with, with me in a particular corner of my consciousness uh, through, through the work that I, that I put into a book. And I have a very good question because I'm always listening to music when I'm figuring out the work. And if I could pair my, uh -huh. my my like work with an album i would yeah. and i would sell it with a d like a vinyl in the back of the back of the the book itself but w is there an album that i should be listening to when i'm looking at your book and reading through it so so there's there's a couple of things i can tell you actually what i was listening to in order to sequence it um which is a uh, uh so i was alternating between Godspeed, you Black Emperor. Always uh, a great choice. And, and... Um, Any the, album in particular like for a, Godspeed? What's that? Any album in particular for Godspeed? Yeah, I, but I'd have to, I'd have to look it up. It's like, it's like in my, my Spotify. So, it, but I don't want to, anyway, I could... It's all good. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to write it down. <laughs> um, and Godspeed there's the, it's like a, it's like a three or four... LP set, which is uh, Johnny Cash's um, kind of like American history long form album set, um, and so I was listening to a lot of a lot of 
a lot of that in particular, um, the, the violent and heartbreaking stuff about unceded indigenous territory, which I happen to be um, making pictures of. And okay, so this is my personal question that doesn't have anything to do with photography. And if you guys have any photography questions, I will, I will ask them, but I also wanna ask my questions that have nothing to do with art, which are like, do you, what was on that 16 year old mix CD? If you're listening to Godspeed now, <laughs> how did this start? Like, what was the first, like, do you have like a memorial or a memorable, like somber breakup song or like just some, some track that is just like sticks um, with you forever? Uh, so, so when, so I had many different mis mixed CDs depending on mood. Of course, of um, course. I, I, and, and Chris, you'll remember this growing up around the same time. There were those, those, um, those commercials for, for like humongous eighties, right. Yep. Or like power like, balance. Like dragon shit, like right? the blue ends with the blue screen with the 800 or yes. 900 number. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was always, it was always somewhere in Missouri um or Tanzas that you had to send your check to um but so so like I made a series of those for myself and my friends that like I had hand pirated off of you know LimeWire or whatever yep. um yep. ooh LimeWire yeah <laughs> audio galaxy ooh remember these things that was yeah, I, see, everybody days. knows about Napster but you, you gotta be a real serious pirate <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Napster was the one where you could get caught, but Audio Galaxy you could just save as straight on the website. There was no catching you doing that. Yes. It was wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. I made a lot of money during that. Anyway, sorry, I won't talk. About that. <laughs> um, so, so, but, but the the music I was actually listening to most of the time uh, was was like. I think I must have listened to um, Metallica's Blackened just as a song, m like more times than you could possibly count. But it was a lot of it was a lot of terrible um, metal, uh, like you know, really, really bad. Uh, corn. No, you know, I was listening to Limp Bizkit. It was terrible. Yeah, <laughs> um, but, I'm sure uh, my mom a lot was of also called hated hated Limp Bizkit after that. What's that? I'm just I'm just starting to go into a phase where like I was listening to a, a lot of Limp Bizkit and my mother had to deal with it. My whole yeah. family had to deal with that for oh, years yeah. and years. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, so so my family also had to deal with that, except I was able to like sun in my hair. So I had I had like James Vanderbeek sun in hair with <laughs> slightly gauged ears while I was I listening see. to Fred Durst uh, be misogynistic. It was fabulous. Oh uh, my gosh, what a time, what a time. Uh, we have an actual question, which I'll read before we go down okay. the rabbit hole more. I was reading Sarab Huda's essay about Dianita, uh, Dianita Singh's photographs. His perspective is that her photos are so special of the way she presents them in her books. How important is it as working as a working artist to showcase your work in a book, um, I wouldn't do it if I didn't think it was really important. And I was actually just talking to um, another friend the other day about this. Um, you know, the book has a life beyond you, um, which I think is exciting. The most the most compelling part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and and I also think that it's one of those things um, that lasts a lot longer than a single uh, exhibition or an article online or whatever. Yes. Um, and so I think I think the crafting of it has to be really intentional and special and um, pointed towards making something new, um, something something idiosyncratic. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so, so my friend relayed to me this, this, this anecdote about Peter Hujar, um, and when he met, uh, David Wanarovich, he handed him a copy of the book, right, on death, right, he's like, it's like boom, right, this, this, like, there's my book, and he said, this is what I'm about. And it was 10 years after the, after the date of publication, but it was still this thing that, that contained um, kind of a distilled version of, you know, 
somebody's somebody's ideological or dogmatic artistic center. Um, and I think that's really powerful. And do you think that this is what you'll be doing 10 years from now with somebody else handing them a book and saying like, this is who I am? Yeah, the IRS, this is it. This is who I, <laughs> that's all I got left. <laughs> yeah, pay your taxes. Uh, <laughs> is there, I mean, if, if anybody has any questions, please let us know. We're, we're only going for a little while longer. Uh, do you have a link to the Blue Sky website? I'm trying to buy the book. Oh yeah, the book is on my website, which is kgpnyc.com. And yeah, it's, it sits there. There's a discount. I run a discount with Blue Sky Gallery, particularly for 33% off. And the code is in the text. So if you wanted, if you wanted to purchase anything, you can do it there. Uh, Nat's book is, a, is a, available. And I believe I still have some signed copies left. So we do have a few of those. Um, I was going to ask another, like a, okay, close your eyes. Please, Nat, if you can hear me. Think about a photograph. What photograph did you think about? Timothy O'Sullivan, uh, Cannonballs. Ooh, I don't know that photograph, so I'm gonna have to look it up. Why did you think about this photograph? Is this something that's in your dreams? Um, I think I, to be honest, I thought about it because I was thinking a lot about Timothy O'Sullivan while I was preparing to have this wonderful conversation with you. So he's, he's like <laughs> stuck, stuck in my head a bit. Um, uh, him and him and Frederick Sommer. Um, but but I don't know. I, I think it's also um, there's a couple of 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 Timothy O'Sullivan photographs that that are important in this moment, particularly the work he did documenting. Uh, well, yeah, documenting the Civil War. He got in trouble for moving things around, right? Um, even back then. Um, mm -hmm. But um, you know, it was a it was it was the way uh, to dramatize the fracture, um, and to at that point he couldn't actually show the battle, so he had to show something else um, to represent it, to stand in for it. Um, and yeah. uh, I don't know. I think that it, it's just a just a, a kind of powerful thing, and the 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 moment we're going through um, with the tensions flared in our country. Uh, Certainly, certainly have me have me uh, concerned about heading heading closer towards a moment like that. Uh, yeah, we hope that it we hope that, that it doesn't come to that, but it does it does seem kind of dire our situation here. Um, so you have two kids. You're and have you stayed? Have you been in New York for this whole time during the the COVIDs? I have. I've been in I've been in um, Queens uh, since May. We we went out to be with my, my partner's family um, right at the beginning of March and stayed out in Long Island um, until May when we came back. Gotcha. So you've been in the city since May. Um, yeah. And are you staying through the winter? I hear it's gonna be a very cold winter in New York, uh, but I guess you're teaching. When does teaching end for you like this fall? I heard everything ends a little earlier. Uh, not, not, not for me, normal, normal schedules for me. Um, I think for, for, for folks who have some in-person component, right. Um, they're not having students come back after Thanksgiving, right. Um, at least was the, the last I heard. Um, I'll be done. I'll be done a few days before Christmas, somewhere around the 19th, 20th, something like that. Um, and then I'll probably teach a winter intercession class and, so there's there's not there's not really an end. It's a so you're just it's a going all the way through. You're just yeah. going all the way through. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna ask everybody if you want to turn on your cameras, let's like have some FaceTime with peoples and just kind of talk about whatever now. I, I if you'd like to get your face back on, I can't do it from my my side, but we'd love to see you, we'd love to talk to you guys. Um, can you actually put yourself on video? I don't even know if that's possible on your ends, people. Anybody out there? Nothing? Nobody? I don't know. So strange. Is there any, is there any, I will, I'm now I'm thinking about Pink Floyd. Is there anybody out there? Uh, if you, do you have, <laughs> here, there's a, yeah. Well, I haven't oh, figured it out. I'm asking. Oh, yep. All right. If you guys have questions, please, please let us know. Um, 
So I was going to ask, what else was I going to ask? Like, have, what has been your biggest influence in, in the, in the art space? Like, what, has there been some sort of influence that keeps you going or like that you keep coming back to? Um, so yeah, I think, I think there's, a, there's a number of things. Um, I, I was, I was reading a lot of Maggie Nelson when I was writing this, this piece. Um, and then I came back and read, I was reading, I was reading the Argonauts, which is like her auto theory kind of piece. Uh, I came back and read Bluettes. Um, music always is a, a significant influence on my, my thinking. So, you know, John Prine, Emmylou Harris, Robert Earl Keane, um, certainly in heavy, heavy rotation. Um, okay. And, uh, and, and of course, of course, being a child who grew up in the potato fields turned cul-de-sacs of central New Jersey, um, there's a tiny Bruce Springsteen in the back of my head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> always. Um, yeah. But yeah, and then, you know, like, like artistic pho photographic influences, um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, almost 20 years into being severely overeducated in art and art history and photo history, et cetera. Um, but, you know, I think back to um, some of the, the first, the first photographers that I was drawn to on my own. Um, and there were the, the Walker Evans, um, you know, library of Congress prints that were hung around my high school photo lab which I remember like losing myself in during a lecture and thinking, my God, you could do that and make a living. Right. And that was, that was it. I was ruined. That was, I was straight line to photography. Um, well, Walker, then, and I see that's, that's a good, uh, that's a good way to get into it. Yeah. And then, and then um, when I moved to New York, um, you know, there was, there was, one Roy de Carava photograph in a slideshow, and and I I went and I gathered everything I could find um, on the internet and 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 dug dug in deep, um, and then you know despite despite my my uncle's best efforts to like get me into Paul Strand before I really knew what the hell I was doing, the like. I bought, I, there was a day where I went to Aperture my freshman year of college um, and, and just bought a bunch of books. Like it was the first books I sought out on my own. What um, was the first book? Did I ask that already? What, what is the first book you ever purchased? Photography book. So there's, there's three. There's three. Okay. Once, so there's, there, there's a, there's a W. Eugene Smith Aperture Masters tiny little book. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Love I that have that book. book. Yeah, Love that's that great. Book. Um, oh yeah, and, that's where I started too. So first year of college, I bought that little gray Eugene Smith book. Yeah, totally, that's, totally. That's funny, right, but, <laughs> so so there were three books that I bought all at once. It was it was that it was uh, Ballad of Sexual Dependency, Nan Golden. Right, series, that's a serious book to buy from your first try. And then it was Wisconsin Death Trip. Yeah, also serious. So you're you're dark right away. As a, you were a metal kid, yeah. a, you were <laughs> not. You, I never changed. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> that's great. Uh, so right now, I think we're done. And you know, if you guys have any more questions, just voice them out. No more text. If you want to get into it and just like talk to us, please, please do. Um, and yeah, our Nat, the book is named Big Throat. It's out now. We we have copies. Some are signed. It's beautiful. Um, I'm just going to grab my very damaged, like not damaged, but a copy that I have here, which is like, I've been photographing the book. So I had to like bend the spine, but it still looks pretty good. And I'll I'm going to turn my lights up blaringly bright for a minute. Oh my God. Uh, it um, looks so good, Chris. Come on. It's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's how it looks in person. Big throat. And, uh, yeah, it's just beautiful. It has that kind of uh, the, the surface of the paper is pretty matte, but it still has detail in the shadows, which I love and is very hard to do. So I'm really, I appreciate that the press was able to do that work for us. 
Um, you know, this is one of the favorite pictures of mine, which is also one of Matt's favorites, which looks way bright in this light, but super black on this page, like almost invisible, which is beautiful. But yeah, that's our book. Uh, we made, what do we make? 300 of these. And um, yeah, we're going to write it out. So un unfortunately, we can't be in book fairs this year because there are none. But hopefully we get back on the table next year when this thing is at least, I mean, whenever the second, uh, whenever the second vaccine comes out, that's when you'll see me in public again. So, <laughs> so hopefully that's by like July or something so that we can actually get back to to, to what it's really about. I think that it's very difficult to make a book during this year. And it's, it's just, it's just, it's just a difficult time. And we're in-person people. Like I, I do, I make books because I want to interact with the artists that we're working with and to do it all on the computer is really, it's not the same. So I hope that we can, I mean, I'm making, I'm slowing down on, on production just so I have enough room on the tables to show the stuff from this year so that I can keep them on a table for a year because it's, it's, we have to show these books off. They're so good. And, you know, so we'll be showing them off next year at some point. Um, I will send you a copy in the mail and if you don't like it, you can return it. How about that? Or not even, I will send you a free copy in the mail. You can hold it for a week. And if you don't like it, you can return it. And that's how we'll do the, that's how I'm going to do it from now on. Just like rent, like a kind of, what is it? Like blockbuster style? Yeah. That's what I thought. Red, red, red box, red box for books. <laughs> is that what that is? Those red, is that what that red box thing is? Like a I kind of so. rental? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. You, but you have to, if you're going to do it like a, like a book fair, then, then they can have it, they can hold on to it, but then you guys have to have like a 15 minute zoom to discuss it, to chit chat, oh. you know, and then. Yeah. You got, you got to get something out of it. You're either bad or good, but you have to tell me something about the book. <laughs> but um, I want to thank Blue Sky for having us on this call. We're going to do a lot of these in the next few weeks. We're doing the next one on today's Thursday. We're doing one on election night at 5.30 PM uh, Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. So stupid, but we're definitely doing that. And it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> we're talking to a person that hates the government. So that's going to be even better. Uh, and we, I was just on the road with the kid. His name is Marshall Shuttle. And we have a book coming out this fall, which is also going to be freaking excellent. Um, he's an excellent photographer and we're going to have a good fun conversation because we, you know, we're just going to have a good conversation. Um, so, but I want to th thank you. Thanks for having us blue sky. Always. I appreciate the love and support and thanks to everyone who's on the call. Um, please meet us again next, uh, next uh, Tuesday and then next Thursday. And then the Tuesday after that, the Thursday after that, the Tuesday after that, and the Thursday after that, um, we're going to do it a lot. And you can find all the information on the blue sky page, as well as my, kgpnyc.com website, as well as if you sign up for my email list, you're going to get a nice little email the day of the election. And maybe you should wait to buy things until then, I would say. But that's what I'll say for now. Um, <laughs> so join the mailing list and you'll find out about all these things. Um, but yes, thank you very much. And if, if anybody wants to speak now, now's the time because this is over. <laughs> thank you. I just want to say thank you, Ned. Yep. It was awesome. Thanks, Julian. Appreciate it. Thanks, so Matt. It was nice to see you. Yeah, it was nice to see all of you. <laughs> I can't wait till we don't have to be boxes on a screen. That'll be nice. I know. At some point that will happen. I miss it. Yeah, for real. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot, y'all. And uh, stay safe tonight. I hope. Oh, it's Thank early you. in the West Coast. It just got dark in the West Coast, I guess. Or maybe it's been dark. I don't know. Oh, Thank next you. Day, this is going to suck. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks, Peace, y'all. Great book. Bye bye. Right, thanks, thanks Chris. everyone. Thanks, Nat. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Good to meet you. See your work. Nice to meet you, too. So much.